Hi, it's Greg from DesignSpark. Today I'm here with Barry from Bluechip. Hi Greg. We're going to be talking about the beta display development kits. They come in 4.3 inches, 7 inches and 9.7 inches. We'll have a look inside the kit and we'll tell you a little bit more about what to expect when you open the box. And then we'll also talk about some of the applications that you can put these products towards. So now we have everything unboxed, we'll take you through what's inside the kit. So over to Barry. Okay. Uh, this particular example is the 9.7 inch uh, and this one has the IP65 ceiling on the front of it. So you've got a machined aluminium chassis and on this particular version you've got a projected capacitance touchscreen and that goes through to the back and as you can see here you've got two main PCBs. Uh, the top one is uh, the processor board and its um, host board. Processors are Cortex A9, 1 gigahertz, uh, with a very long life. Um, in its standard form, the processor is capable of wide temperature operation. That links into a range of uh, interfaces around it. So you've got LAN, you've got USB A, you've got USB B, you've got power in, which on this particular example is 5 volts DC, uh, and then it's on the main little processor board itself, it's got the boot storage which in this case is micro SD, you've got EMMC options as well. On the reverse side of the board you've got a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth option as well and that's topped off with one gigabyte of memory so that's more than enough to run your Android or your Linux applications. In terms of the I.O. off the board you've got a, an amplified audio coming out of the bottom corner You've got an option for a real-time battery in the middle there. Uh, you can see the connectors around the edge and they're taking away, in this case, the touchscreen interface and the LCD interface. And this board down here is unique to the 9.7, um, giving it its uh, 1024 by 768 resolution. Um, and then this small, relatively small black connector that you can see in the middle there is a 50-way. And that's the way we provide the interfaces up for two RS232s and an RS232-422 or 485. You can select the operation of that port by the little links here. So you set them one way and it's 422-485. Set them the other way, it's 232. You've also got I2C on there. You've got GPIOs on there. You've got power in. So if you choose not to have the power in on the main connector there and you want to add your own little board, which a lot of customers do with some electronics, typically a microcontroller on there, providing some kind of functionality, then you can feed your voltages in there. Equally, if you want 12 volts, 24 volts, whatever, you've got the opportunity to step down the voltage at that point and bring it in here as five volts. So there's quite a lot of functionality, obviously, built in and to help along with that we'll start to talk through some of the accessories so Barry do you want to just explain what comes with, with the kit? Yep. Uh, if we start with the operating systems so in your development kit you get two options one of them is uh, for Linux so that will be a full-blown Ubuntu version of Linux so you're able to app get uh, various packages and build the Linux that you want for this particular uh, display uh, alternatively you can load on Android and uh, this one is Android 4.43 which we deliberately uh, chosen because it's one of the lowest profiles Android builds and uh, rather than the, some of the later ones that you get now which are up uh, in relatively large sizes which increase boot times and all the rest of it um, there will be an Android 7 available later this year which we're deliberately keeping as small as we can but um, yeah, so in the kit you can boot both operating systems. You don't need to do anything special, you literally just plug in your micro SD. On the cable side of things, you've got a cable, uh, might be a little bit difficult to see on the camera there, but this one is one interface uh, which goes into the board and it'll go into one of the connectors on the back end. So if I get that out for you. So the two standard connections for the back, uh, I mentioned the 50 way before. Uh, this board here where you've got a range of Pico Blade, Molex Pico Blade connectors and they interface to the various cables that I'll show you. The other standard connector is the screw terminals. So if you don't need most of the connectivity or you know exactly what you want uh, and you've already made it your own cable assemblies, that's the easiest one to use. When you're plugging in, be careful, make sure that you plug it in 
into the actual uh, two mil connector correctly and the way to make sure of that is look at the mounting holes on the side and when you push it in make sure they're properly aligned and you can get the screws in. Don't do what I've done on occasion and misalign it, power it up and then find out that you've damaged something. So they're the options there. If you've got uh, a particular requirement for CAN while well, we're talking about these, uh, this one here has got dual CAN controllers on there so that's fully CAN compliant and with the operating systems they use socket CAN as a uh, mechanism to get your software to control your CAN and it's also got an accelerometer on there as well. A um, little bit specialised that one but nonetheless you've got it in your kit. So going back to the Pika links, so now the RS232 422485 cable, you plug it in, you can't get it wrong, there's only one connector uh, that will match it and that will give you immediate access to serial comms. Uh, this one, you've got a little speaker in there, uh, plug it into the corner, you can see, if I just lift it up for you, you've got P15 down there and the speaker, again, you can't get it in wrong so don't worry about that side of things. Audio cable just presents uh, 3.5 mil sockets so you can get audio in and out. I'll leave that one. Uh, GPIO cable that one, so that will give you access to all the GPIOs that come out through the, the 2 mil connector there so you can program as inputs or outputs uh, to meet your specific need. And finally real-time battery cable so that plugs in here and if you need the real-time clock uh, to be active when the unit's powered down, plug that one in and it'll keep it going. Made a bit of a mess in the middle, so excuse me. This one here, uh, probably be better if I got it outside the bag for you, but this one, we call it the utility cable. It's got various functionality. Um, in its simplest form, it allows you to power on the unit on and off, which is important when you're doing your debug or your um, development side. It's also got a reset button on there, but one of the most interesting bits is there's a, a special little connector on there where if you short it out and literally just get a, a paper clip, plug it in, uh, power the unit up, then the unit will go into engineering mode and by attaching the USB cable, um, which is a USB-B, plug it into here, you can get access to all the operate, the very latest operating systems that we've got and some of the things that you'll see a little bit later where we've done some special sample programs too. So it makes it very easy for you to change the operating system on the system. You don't even have to take out the micro SD to do it. I think we've covered most of those. And on the, finally over here, I mentioned before that underneath the processor board there, there's a, a Wi-Fi Bluetooth option. And if you go into the packaging, you'll find a little cable and if you're familiar with UFL connections it's literally, whilst it looks small and somewhat intimidating provided you line it up square and press down then you won't have any problems there and then this antenna you take the adhesive off the, take the, uh, the paper off the adhesive, don't take the adhesive that might cause more problems and then attach it to ideally a ground surface and that improves your reception on your antenna uh, and that will allow the unit to work. Now the key thing about this particular one that we put in the kit is that it's the approved antenna. So people are worried about CE and uh, radio emissions directive as part of it. With the board that we've got on this particular antenna we can provide a declaration of conformity that meets uh, CE requirements on that. Uh, probably appropriate to say that whilst most people test their equipment with uh, suitably heavy metalware on the back of it to get them through CE. We actually test it like this uh, because we sell to people who put it into their products and have to take it to market and they don't need to waste time or spend time uh, doing unnecessary testing. So the unit as it stands here will pass CE. Uh, we've got our own EMC uh, facility at Blue Chip uh, and we do this regularly on our products. So when you put it into your product you can make sure that you've got a very good start for uh, getting your product through CE as well. You've kind of thought of everything there within one, one nicely contained kit. We also have obviously um, differences with the, the plugs on the, the power supply. Yeah, yeah we've got uh, a universal power supply which supply. As I said before this particular unit is 5 volts so you've got a standard jack assembly. If it meets your needs better we can supply the unit with a screw terminal on there as well so a two-way screw terminal. Uh, if you're any good with a soldering iron, you could take that one off and put it in yourself, but um, 
probably recommend that you order it correctly in the first place and then depending on which part of the world you are you've got the various different attachments to the mains in your area and then just clip it in and away you go. In terms of power consumption on the unit, on this particular one with a 9.7, you're looking something like around 6 watts for the unit when it's working um, with full brightness and the processor reasonably he heavily loaded. The processor itself is very light on power. It will typically take about half a watt, so very, very low. Uh, that means over most temperature ranges you won't have to do anything in terms of the cooling side of things. Uh, you don't have to worry about it like you do with some processors nowadays which run rather hot.